Reaching long distances with LoRa devices can be an exciting hobby. Today we will build a simple device to automate the task and so increase your chance to post the next record. Great YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Since I posted my 203 km LoRa world record two years ago, we saw other people posting longer distances. From a balloon, a group of people reached 702 km. A Sigfox user reported 1151 km. And other TTN users also reported significant distances. How is this possible? As I showed in video number 120, my record was based on a line of sight from the transmitter to the receiver. The balloon record was also based on a line of sight. Because a balloon is higher in the air, the possible line of sight automatically gets longer. Most of the other records were based on different effects. Radio waves can be reflected either in the ionosphere or in unique constellations, also in the troposphere. Like that, you can get connections which would not be possible with a standard ground wave, which, for 868 MHz, nearly behaves like light. The ionosphere is 60 to 500 km away from the ground, and it is used by amateur radio stations to reach operators on other continents. These reflections heavily depend on the solar activity and therefore vary during the day and night. But you can more or less count on it because it returns every day. This method works for signals up to around 30 MHz. So it's useless for LoRa on 868 MHz. Higher frequencies are sometimes reflected by the troposphere, which resides in the height up to 20 km. It is quite evident that 868 MHz connections longer than the horizon are enabled by this effect. Unfortunately, it's not stable, nor is it recurring every day. It is heavily influenced by special weather conditions and therefore stochastic. You need a lot of luck if you want to get new records. Or you use my proposal. Automate it. And it works all year round without your intervention. And my suggestion also work with all even rarer events like rain scattering, airplane scattering or even lightning scattering. What do you need for our new record? A transmitter, a distant receiver, a locking functionality and a lot of time and luck. We know these components from other applications when we test the reach of our gateway. In this scenario, we always use the same gateway and different locations for the tracker. Very inefficient for our purpose. Because we have many LoRa gateways deployed all over the place, we can turn the concept upside down. We use all deployed gateways as potential receivers and we only need one LoRa node to send a signal periodically. If this signal hits one of these favorable tropospheric conditions, it travels a long distance and is hurt by a distant gateway. Our chances are multiplied by the many gateways already deployed. And the logger? Fortunately, we have TTN Mapper. Originally, it was developed for the scenario with a mobile transmitter and a fixed gateway. But it can also be used for our situation because it reports all connections done from a particular tracker. This is the overview of our robot. The tracker sends LoRa messages to gateways. If they receive its packet, the TTN backend transfers it via internet to our console. From there, a special integration transfers it directly to TTN Mapper. Via MQTT, it is transferred to Node-RED, where we record and alarm if a DX connection happened. So let's build this thing. I use a TTGO LoRa board as a tracker and Node-RED for evaluation. The cost of the project is probably $20. 
The software for the TT Go board is a reduced tracker sketch. I use the ABP mode because it connects faster to a gateway and so increases the chance for success. The latitude and longitude are fixed because our tracker always stays at the same place. You find it in Google Maps and you decide how often the device sends messages. If you use SF12, you can send maybe one message every hour. If you reduce the spreading factor, you can increase the frequency of transmission. The rest of the time the ESP32 sleeps. If you disable Wi-Fi, it does not need a lot of power. One thing is not simple. How to compose the message? Because it has to be interpreted by the TTN mapper infrastructure, I use the example sketch of JP Myers, the developer of TTN Mapper. He packs the latitude and longitude numbers into three bytes each, adds two bytes for the height and one byte for the quality of the signal. If we send our packet precisely like that, TTN Mapper decodes and displays it on its map, as we will later see. Here you can also add the program code to read a GPS sensor and you have a mobile tracker. But this is not what we want for this project. Now we have to go to the TTN console and create an application for our purpose. I call it LoRa DX ABP. In Morse, DX was the abbreviation for long distance radio connections. And this shortcut is used to this day by amateur radio operators. Next, we have to create a device. I call it TTGO-ABP. Now we get the three essential keys, network session key, the app session key and the device address, which have to be entered into our sketch. If you press this button, you get it formatted for copy paste. If you upload your sketch, it should immediately send a message via your gateway to the backend and you should see it in the console. By the way, I had to use the board definition Heltec Wi-Fi LoRa 32, even if it was a TTGO board, otherwise it did not work. And of course, the right pin definitions. Next, we have to create an integration between our application and TTN Mapper. We go to Integrations, select TTN Mapper, enter a name and an email address and press Save. Now we have a running integration. I suggest to also add an experiment name for now. Like that, your experiments will not officially be visible on TTN Mapper. Later, you can remove that name. Maybe you select one which is searchable for later. If you want, you can go to Payload Formats and enter this code into the decoder tab. It makes that you can read the coordinates transferred by your device, as you can see here. As a next step, we can check the result on TTN Mapper. In advanced options, we can select our device ID and here we can list all experiments and search for ours. Mine is called ASP-Test. If we press Map, we see all the connections of our device. Now, most of the connections will be very short, just to the next gateway. Not very interesting. How can we be alarmed if a long distance connection happened? With node red, of course. We use a standard TTN node and configure it to get the messages from our device. As usual, we have to create an access key and enter it here in the setup of the TTN node. Also enter the discovery address for TTN and hit save or update. Now the messages from our device also come to node red. And we can use a nice feature for TTN. With the payload of our sensors, it also delivers all gateways which heard the message. We use some JavaScript programming to read the position of our device and all gateways and calculate the distances. If the range is longer than, let's say, 100 kilometers, we store it into an influx DB. If you want, you can add an alarm by email or other means. And of course, 
you find the link to the Node-RED flow in the video description. And now you can put your TTGO board into a waterproof case and deploy it somewhere. It immediately will start to send messages. If good conditions occur, you will get an email. And if you removed your experiment name, the connection is even officially locked in TTN Mapper. You can only shoot a snapshot and tweet it to the world. Cool stuff. This is digitalization and IoT at works. Useless, but entertaining. At least for me. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You will find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.